What's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to know how to assess a wound so that you can treat it properly. And also pass the NPTE. The main things that you're going to look at while assessing a wound are location, size, odor, color, and exudate. <laughs> location is pretty straightforward. Where is it on their body? This will help other providers be able to find the wound and give you a clue to what caused it. <laughs> the size of the wound will always be measured length, north to south, times width, east to west, times depth. Now you may have to remove some necrotic tissue before you can find the true depth of the wound. If the wound's a burn, you can also use the rule of nine to determine how much surface area the wound is covering on the body. <laughs> if the wound has an odor, that means there's something slowing the healing process like an infection. You'll just want to know how bad the smell is and how far away you start smelling it. <laughs> Color is where it gets a little bit more complicated. You want the wound to look bright red because that means it's healing well. A pink wound means that there may be poor perfusion. Bruising over the wound or around the wound may mean that there's deeper damage than what you're seeing on the surface. Now there may be necrotic tissue or dead tissue covering the wound bed, so you'll have to make note of that. Eskar is a black or brown, leathery, desiccated type of tissue. Gangrene is a greenish black tissue that's caused by decay after lack of blood flow or an infection. Slough is the yellowish whitish mucinous tissue that may be covering the wound. Now all of these are types of necrotic tissue that can also count as exudate, which is the last point you want to look at. Other types of exudate can include serous fluid, which is clear and watery, sanguinous fluid, which is red and watery, or serosanguinous fluid, which is pink and watery. All of those can indicate normal healing. Seropurulent fluid is yellow or cloudy fluid that could mean an infection is starting. And purulent fluid, which is usually yellowish or greenish, means that there is an infection. So when you're looking at exudate, you first want to note what type of exudate it is, and second, you want to note how much. If there's no exudate and the wound is really dry, it can start to crack and there can be infections that start in the cracks of that wound. If the wound is really moist, the skin around it can become macerated and start to break down because of the excess moisture. So those are the big things that you want to look at when you're evaluating a wound. Other things that might come in handy would be uh, to know if there are any risks of dehiscence or of the wound splitting open again. Note what kind of scarring is occurring. Is it normal? Is it a hypertrophic scarring, which is just raised above the skin? Is it a keloid scar that's overextending the borders of the original wound? And is there any epiboly? Epiboly is when the edges of the wound bed start to roll under, and that can prevent the wound from closing and healing properly. Being comfortable with assessing a wound is actually really important, not only for determining how the wound is originating, but how to treat it and what types of dressings to use. If you're having trouble remembering or understanding any of this, pay attention to some of the videos I'll be posting in the future about each type of wound because that'll help solidify your skills in the assessment. Now it's time for NPTE Jeopardy! Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, two, one. Serous fluid is clear, watery exudate that usually indicates the wound is healing properly. Hopefully that covers all of our bases. If not, you can always check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy, or you can leave me a comment with questions or suggestions on videos I should do in the future. Otherwise, good luck study and go change the world!